for much of our history, the view of the court was that it didn't make legal policy. It just found the law up in the heavens somewhere, and the parties reacted to that by saying, well, if the court says this is unconstitutional, I guess we'll have to change the Constitution. This is at Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, how the Supreme Court can influence the 2012 elections. With a docket that includes health care reform, illegal immigration, and affirmative action, the cases before the United States Supreme Court this term are sure to spark heated debate in the 2012 elections. How do decisions rendered by the High Court impact election results? It's all a matter of narratives, notes visiting fellow Russell Wheeler. Russ, the Supreme Court hears dozens of cases every year. So using the President's uh, health care initiative as an example, explain how a Supreme Court decision can influence an election. The impact the court will have on an election is first usually part of a broader narrative. The court declares the health care law unconstitutional. That will not necessarily stand by itself, but it will be part of a, a narrative of, of on the part of the Democrats doing what we can to improve the life of the middle class uh, against the insurance companies. It will fit into that in a broader way, and the Republicans saying we're trying to get the economy improved, and you don't do that by raising taxes and imposing regulations. So it depends on what the broader narrative is and how the decision fits into it. The nature of the decision will make a difference. If the, the court, uh, whatever the court does on the Health Care Act, it will be either a direct rebuke or a direct sustaining of an administration, of a chief administration policy. Okay, well, let's look at the immigration issue that the court is likely to address this term. At the end of the day, then does it all come down to messaging about what the court has done? I think the question before the court is whether or not immigration is a field that's preempted by the federal government. And if that's the case, then the Arizona statute appears to interfere with the, with the federal government's exercise of its authority to regulate immigration. That's, of course, not how it's going to get played out. If, it, if the court were to overturn the Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit, uh, the message would be, court affirms tough talk on, on tough policies on immigration by the states. Court says Obama administration is not doing enough so the states can proceed. That's not the question the court's deciding. That's probably the way it's going to get played out. Well, does politics factor at all into which cases the court will hear? If the court's asked to hear each term about 8,000 cases or so. We've generally been hearing 70 or 80 for the last several years. And it, the Congress has given the court almost total discretion on the cases it, it selects. Um, the court itself says that there are several criteria that will determine whether it will decide a case. One is whether a lower court declared a federal statute unconstitutional. You have that in the health care business. Second, is there a conflict among the courts of appeals? We well, have that here also. And the court also says it should decide a case if it presents an important national question that needs resolution. Those are all here uh, in the Health Care Act. Still, a docket can contain issues that are bellwether positions for either party. The real cynic would say, I mean, much more cynical than I am, I can assure you, that the conservatives on the court would say, well, let's take these cases and we'll make life miserable for Obama by deciding them this way. As I say, I, I, I just don't think that comes into their minds. I mean, they may worry that it may look that way, but I think the court generally has the view that cases need resolution and we're going to resolve them. Uh, it might give some consideration to the fact that its prestige and the whole national dialogue could be, could be hurt if it appears to be injecting itself into the election. I suppose that's a factor. On the other hand, here's the health care law which is implemented over stages, and the states need to know whether or not this thing is, is, is good law or not so they can know whether to, to, to implement it and set up the mechanisms to implement it. So I would be very surprised if the court would say, well, we're not going to take this case because it might, it might confound the elections. I just don't think that's going to happen. And Russ, there are times when the Supreme Court's decisions actually can make the judiciary part of the campaign debate. I think it's probably a permanent part of the campaign now because the courts have taken such a prominent role in American political life and policy making. So that's inevitable. Whether this time, because of the, because of the big items on the docket, whether this time you're going to get a special attention to that, I don't know yet. It depends a little bit on what happens. So you can be sure if the court strikes down the health care law, 
you're going to hear from the Democrats that this court is overly activist. You got to keep me in the White House because some of these people will be leaving and you really don't want them repo replaced with more Clarence Thomases and Antonin Scalia's. And you can write the, the similar line that the Republicans will announce. So you might see a little more of it just because I don't see how the court can avoid being part of the election in, in the ways it hasn't been earlier because of the issues and the timing. And have Supreme Court decisions played a really big part in any other elections? One obviously is the election of 1860. The famous Supreme Court historian Charles Warren wrote that Chief Justice Taney elected Abraham Lincoln. Taney wrote the decision in the Dred Scott case, which basically said African Americans cannot be citizens, have no rights that white people are bound to respect. Probably the worst decision the court ever made. Lincoln really zeroed in on that, on that decision in his debates with Douglas and then again in his famous Cooper Union speech. So whether or not Lincoln would be president without Dred Scott, I don't know the answer to that question, but it sure helped him an awful lot. Well, Russ, you've explained how Supreme Court decisions can influence the election narrative or debate. Is there a connection between Supreme Court decisions and the electorate? The court is. It's not invisible. It's off on the periphery. And, you know, most people have only a vague idea of what it is and what it does. And, and so specific it seems to me in the election, specific uh, uh, arguments and debates about specific de de decisions are for a lot of people who didn't get filtered through a lot of other notions. Most people don't know the difference between state and federal courts. How are they going to decide the nuances of some of these cases that we're talking about? And, and, and why should they have to for the most part? Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brooklyn's events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu slash mobile.